Imagine a network of drones stationed in high-risk, wildfire-prone areas, ready to launch the instant a fire is detected. Let's put this idea to the test with a real-time 2D simulation and figure out how the drones could work together to contain a fire, all of which I'll write in C. Of course, there are limitations to using drones, like low water capacity and range compared to traditional air-based methods. But still, they could suppress small fires and be used to protect high-priority areas. The simulation is composed of drones, home bases, and a grid of cells which include unburnt, burnt, burning, and extinguished. Let's first start by understanding how the fire spreads based on these three cell types. The fire starts by igniting a cell on the map, marking it as a burning cell. The burning cell can then grow randomly outward towards neighboring unburnt cells. Burning cells have a set burn time. Once the timer is up, the cell turns burnt and new fires can't spread from it anymore. Cells across the map can also start randomly, emulating the concept of spark-ups causing new fires. Combining all of these concepts together and reducing the cell size, we have a simple pixelated version of a wildfire. This will do the trick for our needs and captures the main principles of fire growth that we're interested in. And to make it a bit more interactive, I've also added the ability to click on the map and create new fires manually. This will be fun to play around with later. Okay, now that we've got the fires working, let's figure out how to make the drones fight them. I start by creating a little airplane figure to resemble our drone. And just for fun, I change the angle of the wings based on the speed. We multiply the number of drones to a thousand, and to get this initially working, I make each drone follow the rules of Boyd's. Boyd's follow three simple rules. Separation, to prevent crashing into nearby Boyd's. Alignment, to match the direction of nearby Boyd's. And Cohesion, staying close to the group. Combining all of these rules together, the result is a beautifully simple way to simulate how a flock of birds or a school of fish move in groups. I initially wrote this code in Python to get the basic logic together, which works okay for 200 Boyds as shown here, but when we go up to 1000 Boyds, the frame rate in Python slows down dramatically. This illustrates the performance advantages of a low-level computing language like C. To target the fire, each drone has a local search radius. When a burning cell falls within the search radius, the drone targets the closest burning cell flies towards it and extinguishes it, turning the cell blue. Once the drone has extinguished the burning cell, it turns orange and flies back to the nearest home base to quote unquote refill before searching for and fighting more fires. So now I'll add back in all 1000 Boyds and include the fire logic to get our initial result. This drone logic performs decently well. We can see that some of the drones find the fire because it falls within the search radius. But most are totally unaware of the actively burning fires, so they're just flying around completely unutilized and look a bit lost. I could increase the search radius to cover more of the map, but then over time the drones mostly condense into the same area and end up fighting the same fire, which they do a good job of, but as a result of this prioritization, sparkups in other parts of the map are totally uncontrolled and end up burning a huge part of the map before the drones can even get there. This is a good example of the classic exploitation versus exploration problem. So somehow we need a way to ensure the drones are able to collectively target a large fire while leaving a few behind to quickly put out spark ups. There's several ways to achieve this. I've done it by splitting the map into a core set of sections, and I calculate the ideal drone count, which is the amount of drones per section if the drones were equally divided. I then calculate a fire intensity parameter, which is the ideal drone count minus the number of active drones already there, plus the number of active fires. So when the fire intensity value is positive, drones will target the section in an effort to set the value back to zero. To make sure that drones don't guard previously burned or extinguished cells, I also subtract those away, but I only do this when there aren't any burning cells in the section. This way, drones will only protect mostly unburnt sections. Finally, I multiply the specific drone's distance to the center of the section, and whichever section holds the greatest value, the drone then targets. 
With this new targeting logic implemented, we can see the drones cover the map more evenly. And when a fire starts, the drones collectively work to put it out before returning to maintain even coverage of the map. Now, it's a bit unrealistic to have so many drones already flying around the map. So I've added the ability to spawn new drones from the home bases evenly, based on the number of active fires minus the number of active drones, thereby spawning new drones when fires grow larger than the existing number of drones can handle, and removing drones when no longer needed. Here we have 100 drones, and once the fires grow past the threshold, new drones are deployed, in this case up to 1,000. To make things a little bit more realistic, I've also given each drone an energy parameter that diminishes over time based on its speed. If the drone runs out of energy, it returns to the nearest base to refill its energy supply. This results in a trade-off between flying fast to cover more ground, but then also having to go back to the home base more often to refuel. In the end, we have a simulation that shows drones working together to put out a fire. But really, this could be any target, like an emergent threat or opportunity. Looking at a side-by-side -side view, we can see how effective the drones are at stopping the wildfire compared to the scenario on the left without drones. I also found that there's a huge amount of variation in the way that the drones move based on a few constant values I've set in the code, like the force values I applied for the void separation, cohesion, and alignment behavior, and the relative weight of the fire intensity targeting logic. In this case, I've just set them to get a decent looking result, but as a follow-on, we could apply an optimizer to these parameters and try to determine the optimal values to minimize the amount of burned cells, for instance. If you remembered from earlier, I also added the ability to spawn fires manually, so I can actually play the role of Mother Nature and spawn my own fires and see how the drones react, like creating my own fire lines to contain an existing fire, which is pretty fun. There's a lot more we could do to make the simulation more realistic, like physics-based energy tracking metrics, drone failures, and more realistic wildfire spread models with wind directional changes. We could also use the simulation as a tool to determine the scale of each drone and quantity required within the swarm to really prove how viable this concept is. I've linked the GitHub repo below for all the code I wrote in C to produce this simulation, if you'd like to explore more on your own. If you enjoyed, check out my last video about how drones could fly in formation like birds do to save energy. That's it for this one. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching and goodbye.